Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. In this video, we're going to look at section 1.4, which deals with absolute value equations. Before we actually get into absolute value equations, we're going to define a little bit about what an absolute value is. An absolute value of a number is asking the distance from 0. So if we have a number line and we choose 0 to be the center of our number line, values to the right being positive, values to the left of 0 being negative, an absolute value is just saying how far from 0. So it doesn't matter to the left or to the right. For this example here, absolute value of A, these symbols here just indicate absolute value. They're a special type of grouping symbol. So if A is a negative value, let's say it's a negative value to the left of 0, it is a units away, which is a positive value, because we're asking a distance. But if a is over here, maybe a is a positive number, it is still a units from 0. So it's asking a distance, how far from 0. Now, if anyone ever asked you a distance, you're not going to give them a positive or a negative value. It's going to be an absolute value. A distance is always a positive value. If someone said, how far is it from point A to point B, you're going to give a positive value. Absolute values always deal with positive values because they're asking a distance from a point of reference. Now, if we have this example here, the absolute value of x, we don't know what x is. It's our variable. And we're told it's equal to 16. Well, there's two possibilities. From 0, we could have 16 units to the right being a positive 16. We could have 16 units to the left being a negative 16. Both of these are 16 units from 0. 16 is the absolute value. So x could be either negative or positive. So we can say the absolute value of negative 16 is 16, which is a true statement. How far is negative 16 from 0? It is 16 units away. How far is 16 from 0? It is 16 units away. So it indicates either to the left or to the right. But because it's an absolute value, we're just asking for that distance. So in this case, x is negative 16 or positive 16. Both of these make this a true statement. But what if we have something like this? The absolute value of x equals a negative value. This has no real solution. It does not make sense. Because if we're asking for a distance and we're given a negative value, an absolute value can never be negative. No one's ever going to tell you, I need negative 3 feet of a board cut. That doesn't make sense. It's going to be 3 feet whether you measure from one end or the other. It's an absolute value, a distance. So what does that mean? Well, it means if we have the absolute value of a variable equal to a number, that number should be positive. In this case, greater than 0. 0 is a special case, and we'll talk about that in one of our examples. So in this case, if we have the absolute value of x equals a number, x equals that number or x equals the negative of that number. Two possibilities, to the right of 0 and to the left of 0. So we have this or statement, just like we had here. x could equal negative 16 or positive 16. All right, let's look at an example. Now we're going to get into an actual equation. The absolute value of an equation. We have the absolute value of 5 minus x equals 1. So if we put negative 1 on this side and positive 1 on this side, the distance between these values is 5 minus x. The distance here is 5 minus x. And the reason why I illustrate it this way is because this absolute value is indicating a distance. This distance, 5 minus x, will equal 1, a positive value, a distance of 1. So essentially, how we solve an absolute value equation is we have two separate equations. And I always recommend you write out two equations. So we could have 5 minus x could equal negative 1. Or we could have 5 minus x equals a positive 1. So because this absolute value equation, we split it into two separate equations, we have to solve them separately, one at a time. So if I solve this one, I can subtract 5 from both sides. 
And now I see I have negative x equals negative 6. Well, we want a positive x or just an x value. So I could divide or multiply both sides by negative 1. And I get x equals a positive 6. So the distance uh, or the value of x would be 6 for this piece of this absolute value equation. Now if we look at this one, we can still do the same process, subtract 5 from both sides. 5 from 1 is negative 4. And then we can divide both sides by negative 1. And we get x equals 4. Now we have these two solutions. We have x equals 6 or x equals 4. Now we want to check our answers. When it comes to any equation, we always want to check our value. So I'm going to take this value of 6 and I'm going to put it in here. 5 minus 6 is a negative 1. How far is negative 1 from 0? Well, it's one unit away. So this is a true statement. The absolute value of 5 minus 6 is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is, in fact, 1. Now if we check this answer, 5 minus 4 is 1. How far is 1 from 0? It is one unit away. So the absolute value of 1 is, in fact, 1. So this also makes that a true statement. So we can see when we have absolute value equations, we're going to write two equations and solve them. Check both of the solutions we find. Let's look at a few more examples. Now these we don't need an illustration. We're actually just going to solve them algebraically. Here I have the absolute value of 5t minus 4 minus 4 more equals 3. Well, when it comes to absolute value equations, we need to isolate the absolute value, get it all by itself on one side of the equal sign. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And when I do that, add 4 to 3, I get 7. So now I have the absolute value isolated to the left of my equal sign. The absolute value of 5t minus 4 equals 7. I'm going to write two equations. 5t minus 4 could equal to the left of 0, negative 7, or to the right of 0, positive 7. And now I solve these two equations separately. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. 5t could equal negative 3. Divide both sides by 5. t equals negative 3 fifths. Do the same thing here. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. 5t equals 11. Divide both sides by 5. And I get t equals 11 fifths. So now what I want to do is check these solutions, make sure they're a true statement. So I'm going to go back to the original equation. 5 times negative 3 fifths is negative 3. Negative 3 and negative 4 is negative 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7 units from 0. 7 minus 4 is 3. That's a true statement. Now I want to try 11 fifths. Make sure that's true. 5 times 11 fifths is 11. 11 minus 4 is 7. 7 is 7 units from 0. So its absolute value is 7 minus 4 is 3. That's also a true statement. So both of these are true. And I've checked my answer, so I'm certain. Let's take a look at this one here. Now we have the absolute value of a minus 2 plus 4 equals 2. The first thing we need to do is isolate that absolute value. I can do that by subtracting 4 from both sides. And now I have the absolute value of a minus 2 equals negative 2. Now hopefully, we recognize something right now at this moment, and it's going to save us a lot of work. If I recognize that an absolute value is a distance, it can never be negative. Distances are always positive. This does not have a real solution because an absolute value is always positive. It can never equal a negative. So this is the case where we'd say no solution. So I'd write out no solution. What if I didn't recognize that this was a no solution? What if I said, OK, well, let's continue it algebraically. I'm going to write two equations. a minus 2 could equal the negative 2. a minus 2 could be the opposite, the other side of 0, a positive 2. Now, if I try to solve this, I would add 2 to both sides. And I get a equals 0. OK, well, that might be a possible solution. 
Here, if I add 2 to both sides, a could be 4, a possible solution. But now I'm going to do what I should always do when it comes to equations, check my answer. If I put 0 in here, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is a positive 2. Positive 2 is not equal to negative 2. So that's not true. If I do this one here, 4 minus 2 is a positive 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2 units from 0. So a positive 2 is still not equal to a negative 2. So that doesn't work either. So the algebraic solutions I found don't work because it has no solution. All right, let's look at the next example. We have the absolute value of 2x plus 4 minus 4 equals 4. Well, the first thing we want to do is isolate that absolute value. And I can do that by adding 4 to both sides. Now that we've isolated the absolute value of 2x plus 4 equal to 8, we can now write our two equations. 2x plus 4 could equal negative 8, which is to the left of 0. And 2x plus 4 equals positive 8 to the right of 0. Now to solve this, we're going to subtract 4 from both sides and then divide by 2. So we have x equals negative 6. Here I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And I get 2x equals 4. I'm going to divide by 2, x equals 2. So we have these two possibilities, x equals negative 6 or x equals 2. We're going to check those solutions. If I put negative 6 in here, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. The absolute value of negative 8 is 8 from 0. So 8 minus 4 is 4. That's a true statement. If we try 2, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. The absolute value of positive 8 is positive 8. 8 minus 4 is 4, also a true statement. Now we're going to look at what happens if we have an absolute value equal to another absolute value. Well, what we can do here is just treat it as if there was just one absolute value. Let's say this is a single absolute value. We don't have to concern ourselves with both of them. We can say 8 minus y equals the negative of that value. But what I have to be careful about is I have to distribute a negative through there, because it's not a single value like it was in the previous examples. Or, and I'm going to write it down here, I'd write 8 minus y could equal that positive value. So we're saying the values to the left of 0 or the values to the right of 0. So we still have two equations here. Now, if I add y to both sides, because I want my y's to be on one side, if I do that, my y's cancel out. And I end up with 8 equals negative 2. Well, that's not going to result in any solution because 8 is not equal to negative 2. That's not true, so I don't have to uh, worry about getting a solution from that. Now here, if I add a y to both sides, I have 8 equals 2y plus 2. And I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So I get 2y equals 6. Divide both sides by 2. And I get y equals 3, or 3 equals y. Order left or right doesn't really matter as long as we come to the solution. I'm going to check this solution. 8 minus 3 is going to give me 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5. 3 plus 2, because I have to substitute in that same value for every y. 3 plus 2 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5. 5 equals 5, that's a true statement. So here's a case where I only have one solution. Now, I did uh, talk about an absolute value that may be equal to 0. So let's look at that, because that's a special case. Because in all of these examples, we wrote two equations. If I have the absolute value of, let's say, a minus 3 equals 0. In this case, we don't have to write two equations. And the reason why that is is because 0 is neither positive or negative. How far is 0 from 0? Well, it's 0 units away, not a positive 0 or a negative 0. It is at 0. So this is where we would have just one solution that we'd have to write. 
So when the val absolute value is equal to 0, it is 0 units away, not plus or minus. And so we can just simply solve this. a minus 3 equals 0. a would equal 3. Let's test that. 3 minus 3 is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. It's 0 units from itself. So we can see this is the only time where we only have to write one equation, is when we have an absolute value equal to 0. All right, let's look at an application problem where we might uh, use absolute values. So we have, according to a height and weight chart, John's ideal wrestling weight is 175 pounds. John wants to keep his weight within 2.3 pounds of his ideal weight. Find John's minimum and maximum weight. Here's where we can introduce an absolute value equation to find his minimum and maximum weight, that range that he needs to stay in for being uh, at an ideal wrestling weight. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 175 and the difference of some other weight. And that has to be within 2.3 pounds. So either positive or negative, 2.3 pounds. So we can introduce an absolute value. His ideal weight with the difference of some other weight should be within 2.3 pounds. So we have this absolute value, 175 minus x. The absolute value of that equals 2.3. While we have this absolute value, now we can go ahead and solve it by writing two equations. 175 minus x equals 2.3. That's the positive to the right. And then we have 175 minus x could equal negative 2.3. We change the sign. So we're looking at the left of 0. Now, if I want to solve this, I'm going to subtract 2.3 from both sides and add an x, because I like to have a positive x. And if I subtract that, I'm going to get 172.7. So 172.7 equals x. If I do the same thing here, I'm going to add 2.3 and add an x. So we just get the x on that side. If I add 2.3 to this number, I get 177.3. So we can see he would have a minimum weight of 172.7 pounds or a maximum weight of 177.3 pounds. This would be John's ideal weight range that he could maintain. With This is his minimum. And because it is an application problem, we have to remember units. 172.7 pounds is his minimum weight for wrestling. 177.3 pounds is his maximum weight so he can maintain that wrestling. All right, so this has been section 1.4, absolute value equations. Keep doing the homework. Practice is how you get proficient. So keep it up. Good luck, and thank you for watching.